importance of the word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, bless our uh, Excellency um, Pastor Arwatumi while as he leads this program for your sake, for the sake of the kingdom. Bless each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Bishop, for, for that wonderful time of prayer. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Thank you. So welcome once again for today's edition of the Global Business Roundtable. Uh, I believe so well that the Lord is here with us. The heavens are open already, and God's glory is being revealed. Thank you very much once again, Your Excellency Bishop Chitia, for that wonderful um, prayer before the Lord. So quickly, as our tradition is, we will quickly go now to our uh, introduction of Global Business Roundtable. Uh, our technical group will be presenting uh, so that some of us that are joining us for the first time can understand what GBR stands for and what God has been doing in the past 12 years across the world. Please, we can quickly go on and present the GBR presentation. Thank you. The Global Business Roundtable has a God-given mission to focus on the holistic development of people in line with God's plan for His kingdom. The aim of the organization is to help members to grow spiritually, intellectually, to grow their networks and to participate in trade and investment opportunities, to also participate in mentorship and coaching programs and to expand their businesses. Our organization focuses on the holistic development of its members and invests its time and resources in developing people in key sectors, including spiritual growth and development, which is critical to ensure and to foster strong moral values and, uh, and ethics, which we want to inculcate in all our leaders and standards so that we could contribute to the uh, production of a new breed of leaders that will shape and transform Africa and the rest of the world. Since its launch in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2009, the Global Business Roundtable has impacted thousands of lives around the world. Ten years after its launch, this God-focused organization has a presence in more than 80 countries in the following regions. The Southern African Development Community, East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, North Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. GBR has strategic initiatives, programs, and platforms that facilitate growth and opportunities for its members. This is done through the global and local events such as World Congress, Prayer Camp, and the Thought Leader Summit, Women of Character Summit, Future Leader Summit, Trade and Investment Exhibitions and GBR Sessions. These events create an environment for our members and partners to meet, interact, and create relationships that will develop their businesses and lives holistically. GBR also has a TV show called A New Thing, which seeks to educate, inform, challenge, empower and inspire one to live their best lives in line with God's purpose by bringing in several experts from various fields and sectors together. The Global Business Roundtable believes that informed and engaged leaders can make a positive change in the world. The GBR Academy was established primarily to address leadership capacity within the Global Business Roundtable leadership structures. The GBR platform is an online system that exists to create opportunities for personal and professional development. It is poised to further facilitate trade and investment opportunities across nations and industries for big business. For more information on our organization, please visit www.globalbusinessroundtable.com or contact us on plus 2711-242-8000. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Uh, I believe for those of our viewers that are watching us for the first time, uh, this is the Global Business Roundtable. It's an organization that is kingdom-based and holistically developing people in line with God's principle. We've been on for the past 12 years. God is doing great things in our means. 2021 is our year of preparation, final preparation. By 2022, GBR will be everywhere in every community in every nation, in every family. So watch out for that space and that difference that GBR and the global business and the global fund for Jesus is going to be bringing to the whole of mankind to be a blessing. Today, we are talking about a very important subject uh, on 
a place of uh, corporate social responsibility. And I believe so well that the Lord has prepared seasoned speakers that will be helping us to guide us in this area of uh, subject matter. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's one aspect that we all need to pay rapid attention because it's one of the things that the Global Business Roundtable and the Global Fund for Jesus stand for globally. We believe that God has raised us, positioning us, empowering us to bless mankind, to bring comfort and blessing to his people. So permit me to introduce our first speaker for today, which is, who is from Slovakia, or is by name Rakesh Tawani. Uh, I'll quickly read the profile. Mr. Rakesh Tawani started his career as a part-time shipping agent at Kandla Port as a student. He was also promoted to work as an assistant to manager to managerial position in different organizations in India, Dubai, Poland, and Slovakia. He then decided to stay back at Slovakia and start his own venture in partnership. Mr. Taurani mainly worked in fashion industry and renewable energy sector. His focus is currently more on sport and wellness. So we are pleased to have him today as our first speaker in this uh, international online GBL session. Your Excellency, uh, in our way of introduction, uh, the program is for 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes to, to tell us what the Lord has put in your heart and to share from your treasure of knowledge. And after 15 minutes, we will allow you so that we can come back to you later to make comments and ask questions, and then we'll wrap up. So you have the next 15 minutes to present to us on your own view on the benefit of corporate social responsibility and how it can benefit us. So uh, you have the floor now. The next time you see my, 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 my video coming on, it's just to indicate to you that you have one or two minutes to wrap up. So Your Excellency, are you online? I am. You have the floor now. Yes, thank you very much. Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Thank you very Great. much, Your Excellency. God bless you. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity. Greetings from Slovakia, the cold Slovakia. Today morning when I woke up, it was minus seven degrees here. Wow. wow. Uh, <laughs> everything white, covered as the typical Christmas Ooh. season in Ooh. Europe. The first thing I did, I thanked the Lord in the morning that thanks to him, I'm up. And today only morning, the interesting thing which I heard very interestingly that if the feel is good in your body that yes, you can wake up, and you are ready to move out of the bed, that itself is a blessing. And that itself proves that you are alive and you are kicking and you want to do something ahead. So oh, yeah. Thank you again, once again, providing the uh, opportunity yes. to be here and share a few of our visions and views what we have done so far. Uh, when we talk about CSR, there comes a lot of things under that. The CSR is like social responsibility is what everybody has to cooperate, has to take and take the moral responsibility of building the society. One side, yes, we do understand that businesses must, the money should flow in, the people should get the jobs and keep on working to have the bread on the table for the families, for the relatives and everybody. But on the other side, when it comes to the social responsibility, we have, they have the moral responsibility of creating the society worth living for creating enough opportunities, at least for our future, for our kids. Right now, of course, we are facing some global issues with the global warmings and other things, which is also the part of social responsibility. But first, what should we look into? I think, personally, what I think is what we look is for the kids and what we can bring on the for our kids, what we can do together uh, and take it further. We in Slovakia have a very clear system from the government side, which is supported, thankfully, that part of our tax, we are allowed to do the social uh, CSR from our side and we can donate it. So the tax rate here is around 20% and 2% the government allows us to invest in anything, whatever activities we feel from our side, it's good and what we can do for the benefits of the societies. What we have done, I don't know if uh, I had sent a presentation, I don't know if it's there just to play some pictures, just to give a background what we are doing here. Okay, the technical group we, we, we presented. 
Or so technical group. If you can share it, you can quickly share it, Your Excellency, from your end. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. One second. Not sure if my screen is visible. Yes, it's it's short. It's, it's square. Okay, so this is what we have done as a company. This is what we have taken a step ahead. We have built this sports and wellness facilities. We're living in a small town uh, where the total population is hardly uh, 20,000 or 22,000 people here. We have created the infrastructure so that for the youngsters, we give them the opportunity to do activities rather than pushing them to the loneliness or with the problems where they don't have the opportunity and they turn towards the alcohol or so other activities which are non social and other things. What we do here is uh, also train the small children actively uh, in the sports. We have appointed the coaches here. We have taken a step where we have getting uh, contracts with the schools directly, which don't have enough space. So we bring those students here at our place, train them and push them to do the physical activities rather than sitting uh, and killing the time in the wrong directions. This is one of the activities what we have done as a social, as a company ourselves. The second activity what we have done is created these uh, some food supplements, some vitamins, some other expertise, where also we have taken the social cause ahead. And one of the every fourth product, we do it as a CSR from our side to help the society, to help the people, to help the things uh, in a right direction. And we create the opportunities again with this also. We have made the management system in such a way that anybody can, anybody and everybody can be the part of it. And anybody can start these activities along with us and be the part and create the bigger circle of the help for the mankind and for the people. Getting ahead, I don't know, is it what we have done so far? Is it the best? Is there a lot to be this? Yes, there is still a lot and a lot to be done. Uh, many things can be done. Uh, my One of my very close friend of mine, uh, he's a vice president in Samsung in India, what they have done very good thing is they have donated the smartphones, the tablets and other things. And they have taken the education up to the rural, up to the nearest, I mean the lowest point where the education can only change the system. The education can only bring the biggest reference and referendum and the changes to the societies where people who learn People, the students who learn automatically will pull the whole family out of the poverty also, as well as then show them the right way of doing things. And these are all the experiences. These are all the steps what has been taken in the right direction where the people and the human intelligence and the social responsibility, self-sustainability has came into the picture and said, fine, what has happened? COVID has taught us, COVID has locked us, COVID has given us the limitations. So let's expand the things in a way where if we cannot meet or be with the person, we can at least connect. Like right now we are connecting online, trying to explain the world or trying to put our vision in front of the people that what we have taken the steps and what we can do together. I think the platform has been open in a very good way where everybody who wants to be the part of the growth can join the hands, everybody can take a moral responsibility and come together to say that this is what we are, this is what we can do, this is what the opportunities we can place, this is what is our vision. If you have the better vision, please share with us. We are here to help, we are here to join the hands and join the forces. I think uh, that's all from my side. If anything has to be asked or said from uh, any questions, I'm available here. Thank you so much for the opportunity once again. Oh, th thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for that wonderful presentation and for sharing a live experience of what you are doing. We are so grateful for that. So we'll quickly move now to Kenya so that we can, we can have Our Excellency Jim 
Mechia from Kenya presenting to us. Please, can you just view our... Uh... Thank you very much. Uh, Jane, Miss Jane Mutishia from Kenya. Uh, she, she's a Human Resource Project Director and CEO of Career Management Center Limited. Um, she's also a speaker, a certified career coach, and the Vice President of Women in Africa Transformation uh, Initiative. She has 10, about 10 years plus of diverse human resource management experience that was span from startup to international organization. Uh, professional work experience include holding various human resource leadership position from several organizations, including the human resource coordinator for the British Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, also, uh, you sit on contractor in Kenya and international, all through uh, UK based NGOs. Jane is also an associate consultant for the Federation of Kenya Employers, FKE, focusing on job evaluation, organizational development, assignment, job evaluation, salary and benefits survey. She's a highly skillful human resource expert. Jane, you have the floor now in the next 15 minutes to discuss this very important subject on the benefit of corporate social responsibility, how it affects us and affects uh, from your own perspective. Thank you very much. You have the next 15 minutes, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, um, Oluwa Tomi Oye Baji. Yes. So let me, let, me, yes. let me try, yeah, let me try to pronounce your yeah. name and see if I struggle there, you have struggled with no, you, you, you did well, you did well. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. do, excellent. So thank you so much. And we're going to talk about a corporate social responsibility. I will just share the screen for the purpose of those who are official. Otherwise, I'll just talk through um talk through what I have prepared for you. <clears throat> and I know we all know the definition of corporate social responsibility, but I'll just touch on it a bit. And today we are talking about the, its importance. And um it's defined as a set of initiatives that we go that go beyond the notion of profit making or compliance with the law. And that for me is very important because most organizations or even most professionals, the much you do apart from making profit is ensure we are complying with the law. We never think about that extra mile, which is for me is what I'm calling the corporate social responsibility. Because if you just stop where the law, where the law ends, most of the times we give very minimum. It entails promoting good causes, instituting good practices, and carrying out philanthropy, or all of which highlight a firm's ethical position. And I would like us to know that uh, CSR is not just for the community, it has an internal stakeholder aspect and then the external stakeholder aspect. And my focus today will be on the internal stakeholder. And you're saying CSR entails having social responsibility towards different stakeholders, both external and internal to the organization externally in addition to the surrounding society and internet within the corporation. And uh, my background is in HR and they have, I've seen a lot where organizations really focus on the outside but ignore completely the CSR act that they should be doing within the organization. And therefore, if we talk about corporate social responsibility and going beyond the law and doing things that make people feel like they belong, like you care about something extra about them, what is it that we can do? And therefore, talking to us as organizations, people who work for organizations as managers, I would like us to just say that uh, even as we work for CSR and promoting the society, let us also be able to focus in and see, are we just complying with the law? Can we do something extra for the people who make the profits for us, for the people who would actually go out there and do something for the community? And one of those is just human rights. Are, are you in, in your organization, even before you go to the studies that you serve, are you meeting the minimum human rights in your organization? Do you need the government to actually come and inspect your premises for you to comply with the law? And you can't do this minimum thing, like just meeting the human rights, and that we have a safe to work environment, that people are happy in your workplace, and you're paying the minimum that is required by the law, even going beyond that. Then we can't start talking about the CSR outside until we clean our house internally. We have work diversity. Are you just employing people that are familiar to you? Maybe people from your race, from your tribe, and things to do with that? and not focusing on who else can we bring on board? 
for our workplace to look more responsible, more sustainable and a happier place to be. If you can't do that, again, going outside will still look very plastic because we must always ask ourselves, when you're doing CSR, are we doing this for the purpose of public relations, the PR aspect of it, or why exactly are we doing this? And therefore, if, if internally we are not happy, if internally people are not satisfied, why exactly are we going outside? So I us to start in as we go out. And therefore, equal opportunity, do people feel like they have to do something different? What is your brand known for internally? Do we feel like we can stay here and be promoted and grow even as we, we try to do other things outside? And then you have the work environment. What are these things that you're doing to ensure that your work environment, not just the, what is the government requires in terms of lighting, in terms of ventilation, but things to do within how people are treated. Just training your managers to ensure that they're actually treating people as human beings organization. Are we doing those basics? Are people feeling when it comes to job security in terms of maybe how you separate with them, that we have a process of how we let them go? Or are we good out there when internally there's no, there's no social responsibility? All we care about is the policy says this, the labor law says this, this is the law, this is the policy. And then we have the mental and general health, like last year we saw COVID hit the ground and it, we, we saw very many CSR activities where people are taking things, the mask, the medicine, all that to their communities, even food, but internally, what are we doing for our own staff? So even as we focus on the external CSR, let us also be able to look internally and see what can we do set up the people that work for us, the employees that work for us as an organization, feel you are a corporate, you are a socially responsible employer. We have work-life balance and aggression. People are having burnout because nobody's caring about what they do and how they do it. It's all about the profits and all that. And people become so sick and they, they damage the brand that is in out there. So um, work overload, shift work, long hours, travel risk, all those things that maybe the government might fight them, but we need government to actually come and inspect your premises for you to give, to be a responsible employer even before you go outside. We talk about career development and I'm now going to just talk uh, about uh, CSR from a um, from professional's perspective like we are here today. All of us have something to give the community. I am in HR. My CSR could be some, a skill that I have that could benefit people out here. And apart from me making profits, when I see those people benefiting, it could be something to do with how they do their interviews. It could be something to do with how they do their, their CV writing, how they maximize their chance of getting a job out there. And that for me works, and that is my CSR. So as an individual, what is it that you can actually do to the community that you live in? To the people that know you, what skill is this that you can give? Because we cannot keep leaving this to the corporates. As a professional, there's something more you can do for the communities that we live in. And if you just own that, then you're going to change the place and make it a better place. So for any organization, always look and see what community are you, what community is around where you're serving after you exited with internal. So we have to be good internally as we step out. And as we step out, we now look and see our communities. What is missing in our community and how can we fix it? We have the SDGs, we have the education, we have healthcare, we have maternal health. We have employment of women. We have so many things that are focused that the UN has listed as things that we can actually focus on. Just pick one, as long as it is fixed to your organization. It is fixed to something that you can actually do without having to feel like you're struggling too much. And there's enough. There's enough that we can do because when we give, then even our brand grows without, without having to feel like you're spending too much money. But it's very important that, um, that um, it is sustainable. It is very important that whatever that you're going to set to do, is not because of the PR aspect, because sometimes most people or most organizations will do things for the purpose of the PR. And therefore you do this year and you do three years with nothing in the pipeline for the, in terms of CSR. So if you're going to do this and become people who are actually having an impact, then it has to be well thought. It must be someone who is responsible for it. We must know who is funding this particular initiative. We must know how we are going to measure its success as we move. And it doesn't have to be the traditional things. You can think things broad in terms of what you want to do. You know, I have another client who does internship programs because he wants to help reduce unemployment. And therefore their CSR, they always take like a bunch of 10 interns at any one time who are paid, even if it's a small stipend, because that is his way of giving back to the community. We have another one who is always planting trees. So look for something because when you do that, even not the tangible benefits of CSR, but what that feeling comes with is, is really heavy. And therefore, my call for today is, even as we focus on external CSR, let us be very deliberate in terms of what we are doing internally, in our families, in our communities, in our organizations, and even as individuals. There's enough you can do 
call yourself a corporate, there's enough you can that you can actually cause a difference in the in the in the community that we live in. Back to you, Your Excellency Olua Tommy. Olua Tommy. Unless if there are any questions for me, that's all I would have from my end. Amoshi Alwatomi is here. Tim, yes. any questions for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that presentation. We are, we are grateful. One of the things you said that is very, very important that we should take care of this afternoon is the fact that we should look at the internal and external. And that if we do well internally, it will also help us in our external uh, work. And that every organization should look at what is sustainable, not for the purpose of PR alone, but we should look at that thing that really, uh, that, that connects to what we do as an organization. And we should be able to identify with that. And that for me, it makes a lot of sense that we as an organization, whether even as a family, we should look at what we can do for ourselves to benefit ourselves, as well as benefit people that are around whatever we do as a family, as individual, as well as an organization. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that wonderful presentation. We look forward for comments and questions afterward from our, from our, our members that are attending. Uh, thank you very much. So quickly now we go to the nation of Ethiopia, where our Excellency Mrs. Ette Gennett um, Bar Bahau is waiting for us. Mrs. Sengenet Bahau. Uh, Mrs. Sengenet Bahau, she has an MA degree in counseling and psychology uh, from Addis Ababa University, as well as also two BA degree in management and community development. She has acquired ample experience in development sector, working for international organization for more than 10 years. She's very passionate about social development issues. Uh, she's married and a mother of three boys living in the nation of Ethiopia. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for taking time to want to be our panelists today. Uh, you have the floor in the next 15 minutes to... Hello, good afternoon, Excellencies. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Zaganet from Ethiopia. Uh, can you hear me? us and enlighten us on this topic ability. Hello, hello, Excellency. Uh, the speaker is having technical difficulty. Can you please move on to the next speaker? Okay, okay. Quickly, we'll, we'll move on to the next speaker. Is Dr. Eric Aja from France. Uh, Your Excellency, can you just view it for us? To... 
Okay. Uh, Dr. Eric is the president of the Francophone Agency on Artificial Intelligence. Uh, also, is is based uh, in uh, in Geneva and Paris with the mission of supporting French-speaking countries, particularly in Africa, in training digital technologies and also artificial intelligence for ethical business and sustainable development. Uh, previously, he works as director of digital department and director of regional uh, office of the West Africa of the International Organization of the Francophones in Paris. Uh, Aja also had various positions as director of High RED, an international NGO in Geneva. He is also advisor to the president of the Republic of Benin, Cotonou, professor of, at the University of uh, Abomey in Calavi, Benin, and director general of the International Observ Observatory on Migrant uh, Remittances in New York. He was a PhD in linguistic and computer science from the University of Paris, and also a master's degree in international economics and globalization from the University of Grenoble. He's married with three children. He's a member of the Global Business Roundtable. Actually, he coordinates the Global Business Roundtable in France. Your Excellency, thank you very much for availing yourself to be here today. Uh, we have, you have the floor now in the next 15 minutes. God bless. Thank you very much, His Excellency, Program Director, Pastor Oluwatomi Oebanji. And uh, allow me to thank also uh, all GBL uh, staff members and the uh, uh, team for inviting me to this session, this international session on the benefits of corporate social responsibility. I have prepared a, a, a couple of uh, slides. So uh, first slide is uh, just to share a general definition of uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, as you know, uh, CSA is a self-regulating business model that helps a company to be socially accountable. That is very important. Social, social accountability is something very important in, in CSA. So uh, not only accountable to itself, but also to its stakeholders and, the, and to the public. By practicing uh, CSA, that we can also call corporate citizenship, companies can be conscious of the kind of impact they are having on all aspects of society, including economic, social, and environmental. CSA also refers to practice and policies undertaken by corporations that are intended to have a positive influence on the world. The key idea behind CSA is for corporations to pursue other pro-social objectives in addition to maximizing profits. So for example, uh, we can uh, quote a, a kind of uh, uh, environmental uh, projects, promoting volunteerism uh, among companies, employees, and donating to charity. These are kind, kind of uh, examples of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility. So, uh, like you can say in the in the in the uh, figure in the, in the on the picture, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development uh, gives a global definition of CSA, like a kind of continued commitment by business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of the workforce and their families, as well as of the local community and society at large. Next slide, please. So we can have some uh, various areas of uh, CSA. So we have internal areas, we have middle areas and external areas. As far as internal areas are concerned, we have market responsibility, economic efficiency, uh, legal compliance. And uh, as far as middle areas are concerned, we have values, environmental standards, labor standards, supply chain management and stakeholders. As far as external areas uh, are concerned, we have contribution to corporate giving, sponsoring, social activities, donation, like we have a picture here uh, of the a recent uh, Sakum Noto and uh, GB and GFFG activities, uh, sharing uh, hampers to, to people in South Africa. These are the kind of external 
corporate responsibility uh, activities. Next, please. So, to answer the question of the, the, the topic, what are the benefits of corporate social responsibility? So, we have various uh, benefits that uh, uh, I, I share a few here from, uh, from, some re from research. We have like local communities uh, support, which uh, uh, derive from ethical reason. We have a reduction of uh, resource usage. We have also boosting appeals for investors because there is a, like what we call a brand reputation uh, that we, uh, can be a, a, a very good benefit to a company to have a brand reputation, improving a company standing and, and image. There is also a benefit as far as uh, innovation is, is concerned by stimulating constructive change in management of environmental and social issues. We have a very interesting benefit for a company, which is employee motivation. You know, when a, a, from research uh, evidence shows that when a company is involved in a CSR, we have employee education, building loyalties, boosting productivity uh, within the employees. This is a very interesting uh, benefit. We have also management risk reduction by strengthening of business relationship. And uh, we also have uh, like uh, limiting business risk. There is also a strengthening links with suppliers. We have uh, like a raising competitive advantage, the supply chain, increasing consumer trust. We have also something interesting access to capital and increasing shareholder, shareholder values by building trust and credibility among key stakeholders groups. And final, market share competitive position like boosting by boosting competitive advantage. These are a few benefits of CSA among others because there are many other benefits like uh, the uh, image, uh, the figure is showing. It is very interesting to see that giving is, also, as, I, as I will say it in the conclusion, giving is something very powerful because it is a law that derives from, from Bible, biblical values that there is, all, there is a, always a reward in giving, in investing. So CSR is something, uh, a, a tool, very powerful tool for companies to, to, to get involved in. Next, please. So uh, not only in a uh, local level, but in a global level also, like uh, in uh, Africa, business cannot prosper in a world with poverty, violence, inequality, and environmental stress, you know? Therefore, uh, for companies to be doing well and also doing good and also doing profit simultaneously, it's a very paramount uh, importance. To do so, they can align themselves with global development priorities and ensure that they catalyze the global efforts towards achieving the SDGs, like the Sustainable Development Goals that were defined by the United Nations uh, as far as food is concerned, poverty alleviation is concerned, education, and all those 17 development, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, the companies, worldwide companies, and African compa companies more especially can get involved in those, uh, in those SDGs. So we can see a link a very interesting link between CSR and SDGs so that companies will be like citizen companies doing profit, but also doing good to their communities uh, for uh, orphanages, uh, getting involved in uh, education, in uh, providing scholarship to, to, to the students, you see, providing uh, housing to the students. There are many areas where the uh, companies can be useful uh, in, in the world, more especially in Africa, because uh, the issue at stake is not only making profit, but also contributing to the sustainable development goals. And I, I think Africa is a, a, a very interesting uh, field for the companies to invest in uh, corporate social responsibility, like water, uh, drinking water and sanitation. All those issues are not only for, for the state, for the government, but also for NGOs, 
but also for companies to get involved in uh, in, in fighting, in joining the fight against against poverty. Thank you. So I will now go to uh, the, 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 con the conclusion. You, you see from what I have said now, we can see that CSR is in inspired from biblical values and principles because corporate social responsibility can be linked to biblical uh, principle of generosity and giving. According to the Bible, there is a reward to every seed let us li listen from Robert Chao Romero, which is an uh, University of California professor, historian and pastor and lawyer. He says, it might come as a surprise, but the Bible also addresses the importance of corporate social responsibility because the Old Testament, uh, just to, to, mention, uh, to mention this example, uh, law of gleaning speaks loud and clear about this. In Leviticus uh, 19, nine to 10, uh, summarize this important social justice law, which is also restated in Deuteronomy 24. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edge of your field and gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and, and the foreigners. I am the Lord, your God. So the law from God himself commanded landowners in the past, in the uh, Old Testament. Today, we can call landowners the business owners in our language today, to leave some of their potential profit for immigrants, for the poor, and for less diverse de deserved communities. This is what we can see as a benefit uh, from CSR, inspired, inspired and influenced from biblical values and principle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that amazing presentation. We are so grateful. Uh, basically, for at least for the instance where you brought it to biblical understanding, that even the Bible re require business people to, to give out what they have received. And there is this simple law, you know, as normal woman being, we, we give out carbon dioxide and we receive oxygen in return. So there is this law of giving and receiving that, that, that guides the way we live as human beings, the way we live as a system, as an organization. And you also emphasize that the place of social accountability is very, very key when we're talking about the issue of CR, um, CSR. Also, you said something that is very important. You try to highlight the objective for or engaging in CSR, and also you talked about the internal, the middle, and the external, uh, how, how it relates within the uh, socioeconomic system, and then you talk about the benefits. Uh, you mentioned some of the benefits, which are also internal. One of the benefits you talked about is that staffs are motivated when they realize that these things are being done that affect them and their family. And also the, uh, the environment is being taken care of. The people are encouraged, the people are, are being blessed by what uh, the, the, uh, the organization is doing within the, within the environment. So you really emphasize on that. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that amazing presentation. I believe that our viewers are going to listen and are going to also ask you questions and make the contribution towards uh, the end of the program. So we'll quickly go back now. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We'll quickly go back now to the nation of Ethiopia. If our Excellency is around now, is she on, on, online, Your Excellency? Excellency Bao. Technical people, can we confirm if she's on line now? She's not yet online. So. Oh, okay. So, uh, pending when she comes online, We'll quickly go now to the time of questions, comments uh, from all our uh, panelists and uh, the, the participants. Please feel free. If you have a question, you can just raise up your hand. We identify with you and we'll quickly, we'll quickly take the question. And if there are questions already that have been asked on the, uh, we, can, we can look at them quickly and, and ask our panelists to respond. Are there questions already asked? And if there are none, please, you want to make a comment Oh, Excellency Gomat. Uh, Excellency Gomat is from 
Gabon, and perhaps he will be speaking in French. So you can quickly just look at your icon on, on language interpretation and switch over to listening. As I see you have the floor, you can ask your question. Je voulais euh, remercier le docteur Odia tout à l'heure pour euh, sa belle intervention et je voulais qu'il revienne un peu sur euh, les lois, notamment les lois internes, les lois moyens et les lois externes. Je n'ai pas très bien saisi euh, lorsqu'il a développé sur les lois internes et externes. Alors, si le docteur Adja, Eric, merci pour sa brillante intervention. S'il pouvait revenir là-dessus, parce que j'ai eu quelques manquements dans mes notes à ce sujet. Merci. OK. Uh, any, other, any other question? Thank you, Excellency Gomat, for that uh, question. I believe, Excellency Eric, you are able to listen to him, so you can you can respond. But before then, let's confirm if there are other questions and comments. Are there questions, Your Excellencies? Or anyone making comments? Okay, Excellency Eric, you want to help us in this? Thank you very much, Excellency Pastor Oyebanji. The, uh, I, thank, I thank you very much, Doctor uh, Excellency Dr. Gomat for your very interesting question. So uh, maybe we, uh, if the technical team could help us to uh, open the presentation to the, to the, to the page concerning the internal and the external issues of uh, CSR, if possible. Okay, they will do that now. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Yes, just the... Uh, the slide before this one. Thank you. So the question concerns the area of corporate social responsibility. The, there are three areas. Internal areas which concern the, the company itself. Middle, middle areas which is uh, both internal and external and the ex external, which concern the uh, people from the outside, how they uh, how people see the CSA, like uh, the, the media or the, the people that are not insiders, that are not inside the company. So as far as internal are con concerned, the company uh, looks, looks for market responsibility and uh, uh, economic efficiency, how to make uh, CSR, something that will be also a kind of economic asset to have uh, more business shares and to have also uh, some uh, more influence in the uh, in the in the in the uh, as far as business market is uh, is concerned. But uh, to do CSR or to to get involved in CSR, you have also to comply with some. Uh, legal issues. So we need legal compliance that uh, can also help uh, the, the CSA involvement to be something very, uh, very powerful. This is what we call the internal areas of responsibility. And uh, it, it takes a very uh, clever management uh, leadership to, to, to make sure that CSR is something uh, understood internally and uh, something very uh, powerful with uh, also the stakeholders. So the middle areas, areas uh, uh, we have values 
what are the values of the company? What is the motivation? What, uh, how is the CSR driven? So it, it has to be driven by values, by standard, environmental standards, by labor standards, supply chain management, stakeholders, like the, the first, um, or I think the second uh, speaker was talking, uh, she was she was talking about the, the the values concerning the workers the, the inside the workers are they happy are the people happy working in the company for the company you see so those values are uh, what we call the, the uh, standards what are the labor standards of the company you see in, in order not to be just a uh, uh, good uh, outside but also to to stick on some values that can help the CSA to be more uh, to be more sustainable and uh, this also has to be shared with with the stakeholders so this is the, these are the middle areas of responsibility that can also help uh, the company to sh to shine to shine uh, in uh, uh, to shine outside this is what we call the external areas the external areas like the are the contribution like a corporate giving like a sponsorship, like social activities, uh, give, uh, donation. This this is why I gave the example of the hamper, hamper distribution that happened uh, in uh, uh, South Africa recently with uh, Sakum Noto. Uh, this is the external aspect, giving uh, to uh, communities, uh, disabled communities, the contribution, all those external aspects should be uh, built on mid middle areas and internal aspect to be very powerful and to be uh, very fruitful. This is what I can say to reply to the question of Dr. Gomat. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that uh, explanation. I think it's clear. Uh, I don't know whether Dr. Gomat, I believe, or uh, Excellency Eric, I've been able to, to explain to us this uh, area that is of concern. I, I want to open it up to people. Please, if you have a contribution, a comment to make uh, as regard this very important topic, because it's a, it's a topic that affects all of us, uh, whether you're, you're a career person, whether you're a business person, whether you are a community-based person, or even as an organization as GBR, GFFG, mm -hmm. we understand uh, what we're already doing, and we're seeing how it's going to benefit us in the long run and benefit the community where we work. So please feel free to make your contributions. Please, if you want to make a contribution, Your Excellency, water, Mezembi, I, I, yes, thank, thank you. You have the good floor. Afternoon, <laughs> good afternoon, Apostle. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, session uh, together thank with you. your team. Thank very you. excellent presentations, very insightful, and even more very relevant in our space uh, currently. I have a question uh, for all the panelists. Uh, with regards to whether they see an opportunity for uh, delivery agents of CSR programs on behalf of uh, big corporates, because many of them, as we have observed, are too busy with their core business to actually be involved intrinsically with the community engagement. So do they see an opportunity for a middle role player to actually deliver the, the, the programs, obviously for, for profit. Uh, that's yeah. number one. Secondly, uh, with regards to the middle um, uh, layer, um, I see the uh, promises of environmental uh, roles there. Um, given the current um, uh, mantra on climate change, uh, is it possible for a company that is involved in CSR activities uh, on environmental management and uh, control of degradation to leverage its CSR budget uh, to raise a little bit more money with uh, 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 agencies that are into climate uh, funding in order to do more? So those are my two questions. Well, thank, thank you very much. Well. Those are quite brilliant, brilliant questions, and they will add value to this discussion. Uh, are there other questions, or we we'll quickly go to the our panelists? 
Let's go to our panelists to respond. Excellency Jane, you want to respond to these questions before we go to the others? Excellency Jane from Kenya. Is she on? Miss Jane? Okay. Uh, do, do we want to go to Mr. Tarani from Slovakia? Is that Tarani? Our panelists, can you hear me? Okay. okay. Hello? You have the floor. If you want to respond to any of the, the comments and the questions that has been asked? I'm sorry, my, my network was some problem. I couldn't get the last few. That's the reason it was not able to connect. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll come back to you then. Sure. Uh, Dr. Eric? Dr. Eric? Yes, Pastor? You need to unmute yourself. Yes. You want to respond to the question asked by Dr. Uh, Walter? Yes, the, the question of Dr. Dr. Walter Muzembi, a very, very interesting and tremendous question. And uh, so yes. I, I will try to, to, to contribute uh, to the answers. Uh, I think while uh, my other, other, uh, uh, other uh, also people can also uh, contribute. So there is, uh, the, the first question is a, a very strategic question as far as the delivery agent are concerned. You see, it is a, uh, it takes, it takes uh, time, it takes effort to have a CSR policy in the company. So uh, this has raised, uh, it, it has become a, a business opportunity for uh, some uh, company that uh, have, uh, uh, that have become a co consulting company to create a CSR business uh, in order to help big company that are too busy uh, to to frame to frame the CSR policy, so now there is a kind of uh, CSR framework that those company are uh, introducing. Uh, they, they also have a United Nation uh, United Nation framework that they try to uh, to frame and to to share with uh, big companies, so that they can uh, be like uh, uh, delivering agents, uh, middle agent to make uh, CSR policy re relevant. And uh, it, has, it has been a very useful, useful opportunity and useful, uh, useful business for, for those company, uh, those big company to get in, involved like uh, oil companies like Shell, Total and those companies that uh, don't have time, so they, they need all those uh, uh, delivery agents to make a very, very good uh, uh, consulting work for, for CSA. And that was the first question. And the second question is also very interesting as far as uh, the issue of uh, raising uh, uh, funds and for those uh, business, environmental businesses is, is concerned. So uh, let me just give one or uh, one or two uh, example of the very important of uh, uh, this issue of uh, CSA, uh, like in uh, in African country. I will give you the example uh, example for, for uh, from N Nigeria. You know, we have very powerful companies like UBA, uh, uh, UBA and MTN in Nigeria. And from uh, some research I made, those are uh, corporate corporate Nigerian company. They rose. Uh, very important uh, funding uh, in order to help people for the as far as COVID-19 is uh, pandemic uh, is concerned. You know there is a, a big effect of do, of this pandemic on the on African economies uh, and more especially Nigerian economy, which is one of the most uh, powerful of the uh, Africa or West Africa. So there, the, uh, 30 of the top companies uh, have. They have donated a sum of 32 billion uh, of uh, Naira as uh, the CSA last year. That represents a very, very, very interesting uh, uh, amount 
that and they they have a, a kind of they create a fund a covid uh, funding and they donate they they make a kind of uh, a coalition they launch a coalition a csa coalition to assist the government in uh, combating the coronavirus disease in nigeria and uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, data co uh, collection uh, was very 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 important for the government and a, a, a second example is uh, in togo you know the west african development bank uh, is in lome and they collected those also a huge amount of money to help west african countries for this uh, covid 19 uh, issue so i think african companies are also getting very well involved not only for uh, environment or the climate uh, issues but for very concrete issues like health uh, not only COVID, but also malaria, malaria and all those uh, very important uh, disease affecting the continent. These are just what I can uh, share as contribution to the answer of uh, those very interesting questions. Thank you very much. Jane, do you want to make a contribution towards that? Is she, is she online? Excellency Jane? Okay. I, I, I believe Dr. Um, Dr. Aja has been able to answer that very wonderful question asked by Dr. Zambi. Uh, but if there are other contributions, they are welcome. So we'll quickly ask uh, this afternoon, any other contribution or comments or question to this very important topic? The excellencies, please let's be free to ask questions or make our comments as regard these questions. Any other question or comments? Okay, maybe I should ask the question, uh, doctor and all the panelists. What are the laws uh, that guide this social responsibility? And how do we uh, ensure that organizations comply to them in different countries? Are there, are there times where we don't see organizations do this social responsibility? Are there, are, are there laws that enforce them to be able to do this? in their various country or location where they operate from and what are they what 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 are they uh doctor you want to help us in that thank you very much his excellency uh, you know crcr uh, corporate social responsibility is on a vol voluntary voluntary basis you see it, it is not a like a uh, you have to pay tax. Uh, you see, uh, you know, uh, issues like 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 tax are governed by by laws. But uh, CSR is a uh, like we say, corporate social responsibility is is a responsibility. You see, like a a moral responsibility. Uh, for, for we Christian, we can we can say a speech, spiritual responsibility. But it is guided by by uh, you know, it is guided by voluntary basis. And also, it is uh, also guided by profit, as we shared in our presentation. There is uh, also profit from that, and it has become something, uh, you know, a driving force from United Nations uh, recommendation. You see, there there are some uh, more and more recommendation from uh, United Nations, from uh, World Bank, uh, to uh, the Chamber of Commerce that they make recommendation to the companies, to the SMEs, to, to motivate them, you see? So it is not, a, there is not a law to enforce, a law enforcement processes, but there are uh, uh, rules and principles to help them, to like some guidelines to help companies uh, uh, have CSR uh, policies. And uh, when they have CSR policies, they can have access to more funding or they can be, uh, they can have a better image. It is those those uh, advantage 
that uh, uh, help that uh, motivate them, you know, but but not a a law or not a something uh, bind, binding. It's not a binding principle, but it is a moral principle to be uh, for solidarity for the community. So uh, this is uh, the the issue at stake. It is how uh, how to encourage those cooperation like uh, like. Uh, Brother Nicolas Simbanda also asked in the in the comment how to motivate to make, to motivate the SMEs to play their part uh, exactly. So it is a a kind of uh, moral motivation, a kind of also uh, to sh to to show them that that it is in their interest in, in, when motivating the employees, they can have better workforce, they can have better living uh, condition or better uh, envir environment in the company. This is uh, uh, just a few argument that can uh, help the company, the SMEs to get in, uh, involved in, in doing good, doing good and doing profit. This uh, is how we can motivate them uh, to, to know that giving is uh, also a, a, a very important principle, a biblical principle, because there is a reward in every seed. You see, these are, uh, just encouragement and not a not a law, but encouragement and uh, motivation. Okay. Th thank you very much, Your, Your Excellency. I, I don't know whether there are other contributions and comments to this. May I come in again, uh, Apostle? Do we have our other speakers online now? Yes, I am here. I okay, am here. okay, okay, so okay. That's the floor. Um, okay. So the question was on how to motivate SMEs to play their part rather than. You, you want to quickly contribute, Your Excellency? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, um, So the question was on how to encourage SMEs to contribute um and not leave it to the big corporates and, and like i said earlier this goes even to individuals so i think the more we talk about it what we're doing today trust me there's someone who maybe has never thought of doing csr but from this conversation they're going to do something so that little advocacy of people knowing that even the livers and the trees don't live for themselves there's something you can do to make the world a better place and as a corporate you even have even as an sme you, you still have some that you can do and i've seen them doing this so for me, I would just say it's about advocacy, 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 and to not make it look like it's a big for the it's it's something for the big um for the big boys. It's for anyone. And nowadays we're living in a very good time because initially people, the corporates would do because they would, have, they would afford the media and would have the media covering their story. But now even you even have social media. You want to run something, you can advocate, call for people to support you, people support you, and you can actually do that in the media. And people actually see that uh, even SMEs can do this. So we can take it upon us to do the advocacy at, at an individual level, to encourage SMEs and even individuals like all our time here, Eric, Walter, John Sawira here, all of us, trust me, there's something you can do at your level to give back and make the world a better place. Oh, thank you very much for that contribution. Everybody can be part of it. Uh, from our personal giving, from our relation to others, we can we can we can impact people positively. But uh, Your Excellency, Doctor Wata, can I ask you to make your contribution now? Thank you, Apostle. Let me come back in again, uh, and I want to hear from the uh, three panelists on what they see as the possible areas of incentivization of CSR from governments. How can we grow this market of CSR and, and motivate uh, those that are already doing it to do to give more, those that are not coming in to come into that space uh, uh, through government incentives? Uh, for example, the first speaker spoke about how they built uh, uh, sporting infrastructure. I would begin to know uh, whether they imported any capital goods for that sporting infrastructure if they did so did they pay any any duty uh, because that could be a possible incentive area uh, from governments 
duty free or a zero rating of capital goods uh, that go into the construction and conception of CSR projects. But I want to hear from the panel, they are very, very uh, eminent uh, in, in that area. I'm sure they can give us a battery of possible incentives that we can engage governments on in order to grow this CSR business. Oh, thank you very much. That, that is an amazing question. Thank you, Doctor, for coming that dimension again. So I'll open it up for the panelists to make their contribution. Excellency. Thank you very much. Which of you want to come up now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency Walter Zembi, for this uh, outstanding question. Uh, from my uh, personal experience, the way we can uh, engage uh, government, help government, is to uh, make some facilitation for the companies that want to get involved in, uh, in CSA activities. And uh, one of the best way that I, knew, I know from uh, uh, like uh, uh, Switzerland, what they do is they create many uh, foundation, they create foundation and the foundation are the ones that get the funding from the company to make it relevant for social activities. And when you have a foundation, the government can give some uh, 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 duty free or some facility to that foundation that they cannot give to the company. You see, if it is a company, you, you, you are subject to tax and all various uh, the video tax that that the law cannot uh, uh, swipe. So the the uh, the strategy is to uh, to have an agreement and and create a foundation. And that foundation has has uh, that foundation has some uh, agreement with the government to to have uh, uh, tax tax free uh, importation to to uh, imp uh, to buy some goods that they can share uh, to people. And uh, this is the way that uh, we can help. Uh, we can help a government. It is by creating some uh, law or some facilities for the NGOs or the foundation that uh, can be in between, in between the companies and uh, the population that are in need to uh, to receive those uh, uh, CSR uh, activities and CSR uh, CSR funding. You see. Your Excellency, can we quickly go to Excellency Jane? Thank you, thank you, Your Excellency. Um, I think the government does a lot of that. They you, they might be using taxes and money and all that, but it's a lot they use. Uh, they do in terms of um, at least from where I come from. That's what I'd want to think because we always have like if there's hunger, you'll see the government fundraising for relief food. Uh, you'll see the government doing so many things in terms of the things that we do for the, for the ordinary citizen, including um, the free medical things. It's our money's taxes, yes, but at least they do a lot. All their programs, if you look at it from that perspective, is from actually making the life of the ordinary citizen much better, um, including the housing program. Because like I said, in my perspective, when you talk about CSI, it doesn't have to be the usual things that we have always understood. It has to be anything that makes the life of the people that you live, that you live with that you can impact better. And therefore, we have seen government giving even uh, tax leaves for things like mortgages because it wants affordable housing for people. We have seen the government trying to do everything, including partnering with NGOs, because for the government, they come at the policy level to see how many, how many women do not have to go through baby maternal, maternal deaths, uh, children deaths, and you know, all those things. So in my opinion, I think the government really tries. It's so that sometimes you don't understand what the government is doing, but uh, there's so much they do in terms of um, improving the well-being because the government is not profit-oriented. So from the policies to the actual program that they do to their ministries, it's all about it's all about um, um, how how we how we better the lives of other people. The only thing that I'll draw to government most of the times is when it comes to the ethics perspective, in terms of ethics, in terms of those who now come and play with the resources that are supposed to help the citizen, for, for them to live better lives. And we are people who actually get away with stealing from the government resources and nothing is done for them. 
And therefore, for me, that's why I would tell the government, can we be very serious in terms of ethical practices, in terms of governance, in terms of how we employ people, in terms of the equal opportunity for people from the different regions, in terms of distribution of the resources from the government, are we just benefiting those who come from our region or are we actually thinking, sitting and thinking, what can we do to these different populations? We still have areas where maybe education is not that free or that available. We still have areas where maybe health is not that available. And all those are simple, simple things that we keep saying are the responsibility of the government. And therefore, for me, I approve the government. At the same time, there, there's a lot that we could do from a government perspective, from the taxes, from the ethics and governance perspective. And just ensuring that we keep telling the people that, um, you know, we not making people responsible, even from how we run our politics. When you say this is not allowable, if we allow it, then we are communicating the opposite. If you don't make the environment okay for other companies, then we are not doing our business government. But uh, I have a lot to applaud the government for. And I think in all the countries, um, they may not be doing enough, but it's enough they do. Back to you, um, Your Excellency. Right, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that contribution. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, John Sira, I've seen your hand. I'm going, to, I'm going to let you talk later. But before we quickly, let's give the next 10 minutes to Our Excellency from Metopia. I think she's back online now. So that we can give her the benefit of making our input in terms of this contribution. Your Excellency Bao, are you online? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very sorry for the disconnection. Um, I think my video is not working Please, well, you have, so you I- have, You have the floor in the next- Okay, okay go okay, ahead, Excellency. Please feel free. We can't see you yet. Can you hear me? We can hear you very well, Your Excellency. Very good. Uh, so um, I, I, I feel very much honored to be here with you and I'm very much um, happy and I, I thank you all the coordinators and uh, I appreciate this great platform, uh, GBR. I, I recently heard about this platform and I was very much excited to be, to be here and to speak on one of the most important topics, which is corporate social responsibility. Um, I don't wanna repeat what has been said by other speakers already. Um, I, I thank you all the speakers and they mentioned uh, the basic the basic definition so I don't have to repeat but my focus will be on the social development aspect uh, because you know my background is more of from a development a charity background I have been um, in the development sector for for long and I have been working in different NGOs so I I, I really um, wanted to focus on the, the contribution or the benefit of corporate social responsibility in terms of social development. Because, you know, um, we know Africa or Africa, especially the, the Sub-Saharan Africa is known for its poverty. And, uh, you know, th there are indicators that has been released every time by the World Bank reports, by this development, international development actors. And whenever I see those things, I feel down. And um, you know, we are the biggest recipient as, as, um, as a country, as well as as a continent, because uh, you know, every time in, in development, we're, we have been mentioned as a slowest uh, continent in their economic development. But I personally believe that we do have the resource and uh, corporate social responsibility could, we could use corporate social responsibility as a way to channel, uh, to bring the development that we all are aspiring. Uh, for example, like, like the standard of living, when, when you see the, 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 the people who are living under extreme poverty, um, maybe from my slide, you can see it. Just a few facts. I tried to present few facts about Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa. Their literacy rate is uh, from a survey that's uh, that was made on 2019, which is 65. Can we ask the technical team to present the slides, please? Technical team, so that you can continue your talk. 
Thank you. No problem. I can I can refer from my PC for now. Uh, so sixty five point four seven percent, which is which is huge. Which is um, I mean the gap is so huge. So the the illiteracy rate. I mean not the the, the illiteracy rate is so huge, close to fifty percent. So. Uh, the unemployment rate, for example, in South Africa, which was, um, I think, from a report, it says 34.4% 34 in, in 2020. Uh, the extreme poverty in East Africa is 35%. So, like, should we depend always on a foreign aid, you know, to bring a social development for our continent? I personally believe we should we should unite we should collaborate we should start uniting with like-minded partners like-minded people we should start doing our own individual contribution to bring a solution for this um you know uh, underdevelopment and a state of uh, you know waiting for a foreign aid to bring a sustainable development because um, as you know, currently we have been going through a war, um, which was really horrific. And one of the threats that we have uh, faced uh, as, as individuals, professionals working for foreign companies was, you know, uh, uh, an aid cut. And uh, thankfully our prime minister, you know, didn't give a hand for that rather, you know, he said, you know, we better cut off and, you know, don't get any international aid instead of compromising our, uh, you know, sovereignty. So like by this, uh, I, I, I'm not trying to advocate political agenda, but, you know, we should be awakened and we should be aware that, you know, uh, seeing these things, you know, um, uh, let, I mean, just seeing all those things, we should be aware that not doing our responsibility as companies, as individuals, as Christians could affect us as a nation, as a continent, you know, because, you know, the, even the, the United Nation, the veto power, it's, it's handed by only five countries and we don't have a permanent seat as, as a continent even. So all those things will have an influence as a continent, as citizens of Africa, as you know, as an Ethiopian, it, it has been affecting us. I mean, this is our, our recent experience. As, as a citizen of Ethiopia, I have been in a dilemma. I mean, like uh, to, 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 to question, uh, was I contributing for something that's beneficial or, you know, I have been contributing for, for, for unnecessary or for a fake charity that I have been genuinely contributing. So all the charity, um, I, I just, you know, tried to, I started questioning even my, my contribution. Was I in a, in a, in a right place? Was, was I, you know, contributing uh, for a goal that was ungodly or like, you know, for something that's not um, clear to me. So as, 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 as a person, uh, I, 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 I share what Jane has said earlier. She said, you know, this is not only a business concept or this is not only a business uh, philosophy, but it's a concept that can be applied um, at an individual level. Am I responsible for my family? Am I responsible for my, for my own life? Am I responsible for, for my community that I'm living in? Am I responsible? I mean, am I doing things in a right way for my community, for my nation? Uh, or am I just, uh, investing all the resources that I have for my own. Is it uh, what God has given me? Because in, if you remember from Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve, 
he 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 told them he gave them the mandate to rule over the earth and what's created in it so you know this is being responsible for our surrounding for our environment so when you see even um, the warning uh, the global warming um, news it's because that we fail to uh, properly hand handle the responsibility that's given to us by god so uh, i believe there is more res resource in our hands rather um, we should systematically uh, use and we have to um, be aware of the consequences of not acting timely so um I, I, I would say I should shift to the next step. So, I mean, as, as business owners, uh, as people who are, who are trusted by God to own a business, to employ other people, uh, what should we do as, um, as believers who are living in a community? Uh, what should we do for, for a community surrounding to us? As, as family members, what should we do? Um, I mean, personally, as, as a wife, as a mother of three, what is my responsibility? What God expect, expects me to do? So just let me shift to the next step. So uh, more of from a business perspective, I feel that more of uh, the audience is um, business company owners or um from that background, invest more on viable businesses uh, in a state of you know, having the resource and holding it back. It's good to invest more on viable businesses. It's good to give emphasis for internal stakeholders and to train uh, and employ more, invest in job trainings of their employees so that you know, their employees can be qualified enough to give or to give back to the company. Because you know, when we invest, definitely we'll invest, we'll, it will cost us some money, but the, the, the investment will have a return. So we should think in that way and we're investing not in vain, rather you know, that, that investment will have a return. It could be directly to our company or it could be indirectly to our society because you know, those employees will work uh, indirectly to our community, to our nation. So we should have that kind of thinking. And we should also promote the concept of a corporate social responsibility in our network. Uh, I know this, this concept uh, is not new, but you know, it's rarely known in, 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 in a nation, for example, for, for, for East African uh, uh, you know, business companies. Uh, definitely they might do some charity uh, now and then and whenever they are asked to, but they don't have a, a strategy or a policy. Uh, but for me, I believe the millennial generation, whether having them as customers or whether they're having them as, uh, as employees, definitely this is this this will be the only way to do business because you know there is also competition is coming we're not uh, competing in the market in a local way rather you know international companies are coming so we should be well aware of the concept and we should promote and we should push you know this as an ethical and a right way of doing business uh, but it can be customized. I mean, there is no uniform way to apply corporate social responsibility, but it should be customized depending on the size and the nature of the business. And we should have a mechanism to dedicate uh, some portion of our profit for social development and charity work on a regular manner. Um, and we should intentionally invest, uh, you know, on the on the needs of people. Like instead of creating dependency, we can, we can invest um, on charities that could you know, help people to have economic independence. For example, 
there is there is a local charity nearby uh, my area they give them a seed money to start a business so by the time uh, they get uh, i mean they get these needy people they ask them you know what kind of thing they can do and get a financial freedom for their life instead of giving money or making them regularly dependent by providing food items or food supplies. It can relieve uh, their temporary problem, but it will not solve their you know, long-term financial need. So giving them seed money and you know, uh, helping them to be stunned by their own um, you know, to support their family could be a nice way. And also we can create a partnership with like-minded actors. It could be with government, it could be with uh, businesses uh, in our area, it could be with our employees. We should encourage even our employees uh, to do, you know, um, a social development in a systematic way. Uh, I mean, it should not, it, everything is, should not be, uh, in, in, in you know interpreted uh, in money but you know when they invest their time also it's 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 a contribution so we can help our employees to contribute for the social development or their community in the area i mean where where the company is working we can mobilize our employees to do a meaningful job for their community uh, so um, I think this is um, this is what I have. I think I don't have to take much time, and I'm very sorry again uh, no, no, for no. the connection problem. Um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was a beautiful presentation. Thank you very much that you did not allow us to miss out of that wonderful input <laughs> to this very important topic. Uh, I, I think one thing that is very very clear is uh, the part that we all have a role to play. Uh, the summary of it all is that we all have a role to play and we must be able to identify that role and define it in the broad perspective to give back to the community and the society where we get from. I think you also said something that is very important in your, in your write up on the text. You said, you said CSR is the way to bring Africa's social development and minimize foreign aid and dependency. That if we all begin to practice this uh, act of CSR, uh, we will be free from being a dependent Africa to become an independent Africa that can take care of our needs and meet the social equity of the people. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that contribution. I will not want to repeat what you've said again. Uh, I will quickly go ahead and give um, a privilege to His Excellency Don Zira from Malawi to quickly make his contribution. Then I will allow Excellency Nimpo, Miami, if you would like to make a contribution in one minute. Excellency John Zira. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Excellency Program Director, for recognizing me. Thank you very much indeed. I joined my colleagues who have thanked the brilliant and the powerful presenters for this afternoon session. Um, I wanted to find out to say maybe I need to be enlightened. I, uh, am I confused? My understanding of uh, corporate social responsibility is that uh, there are laws governed by big corporations which are engaged in the production or mining to give back to the area where they are operating or where they are doing business. For instance, uh, I, I remember uh, one of the co uh, companies which we are trying to start a business in our community, they were asked to build either school, a health center, or indeed recreation centers, either of those. It was a, a prerequisite. So in this scenario, is there any way or any possibility that the, the activists can lobby governments to pass laws to ensure that the organizations participate in corporate social responsibility by making corporate social responsibility expense as a tax allowable in their financial statements. That's to incentivize so that this thing is carried on board. Mind you, I'm looking at the gospel of Jesus, which says true gospel 
I alluded to James chapter 1, verse 27, so to save the widows, the orphans, and this, and that is a quite corporate social responsibility. In so doing, they would not only profit uh, through the tax allowances, but they also profit spiritually. There are these spiritual roles which you are governed by giving. You have to participate in doing something so that you also enjoy the fruits. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, that Excellency John, uh, just to make a contribution, I believe in this uh, topic on social responsibility of corporate entity, it differs from different nations. In some nations, there already there are policies that encourages it, and there is tax allowances granted to some organization that do that. I know I've seen where a, a company construct road and the, the, the government give them tax waiver, or a company decide to do a particular thing and the government give them tax waiver for a period of time to cover for that which they've done. I've seen that done in Nigeria severally by big corporate entities. But I don't know what's happening in other countries of the world, but I think there are policies that guide that. But I think it depends on the country and what is obtainable. I would like to hear from Excellency Nimpo Meame if you'd like to make a contribution before our time is going up. Excellency Meame, you'd like to unmute yourself and make a contribution? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, and good afternoon uh, in good afternoon. the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for Excellency participating. And thank you for this forum on a very important. Can you speak louder a little? <clears throat> um, I just wanted to make a point that uh, uh, the tax exemptions are negotiable. It's just that most of the time, the NGOs, particularly non state actors who do not have bilateral relations with government are not aware that they are actually in the position to negotiate uh, those tax exemptions and waivers to whatever extent possible. So I do encourage um, uh, that, uh, you know, just even if, just check the governance around CSR in any particular country because they differ as you have already indicated, but also make it part of your policy as a, um, an NGO that when you support as a matter of principle, you are giving and making a difference. Therefore, uh, governments should not tend to want to profit by making revenue from those proceeds because usually those proceeds would have been taxed anyway. So it's, it's a matter of having your own policy on how you engage to support governments or communities uh, for, for development. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you. We are, we are running against time, but I don't know. Let me not rule out that there's a possibility of somebody that wants to make a contribution. Is there another person that wants to make a contribution or a question or something that has not been addressed? Dr. Mezambi, has, the, has your question been well addressed? I think I've been answered uh, adequately by all the respondents. Thank okay. you, Apostle. Thank you, Your yeah. Excellency. Any other comments? Any last question? Uh, final word uh, from you, your panelist. Do you have any other thing you want to say one, in one minute? Yes, yes. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Program Director, Excellency. Uh, just uh, to motivate the small and medium enterprise, you know, uh, corporate social responsibility is not only uh, about of money. It may be also about of time, sharing your time. You know, because as uh, we say, when there is a, where there is a will, there is a way. So uh, if you don't have a big amount of uh, money or this thing, there are some uh, SME that share their time to visit, to visit uh, people in hospital, or they can share their time to clean, to clean some roads, to make some, uh, some, uh, some kind of manual work with the time. Time is also a big asset, a big value that you can share as a kind of CSA, not only uh, budget. This is a uh, first, contrib first contribution. A, a second one, very, very quick, is that uh, uh, I would like also to, uh, to confirm that in some countries, there are some policies governing uh, CSA. So uh, all countries don't have it, but uh, it uh, in some countries it is on a voluntary basis, as I said, but in some other countries, there are some policies that uh, as a big company or all company, you have to justify 
a, in, a, in amount of money that you invest in CSA and make report, annual report in some, like in France or in Denmark, uh, there are some uh, countries that even it is becoming uh, mandatory, mandatory to make CSA policy, uh, just to complete uh, to, to what I said and to make it uh, more uh, global. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency, for that contribution. Any other contribution from, okay, Excellency Jane, good. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And uh, for me, it's a call for all of us. There's always a chance and an opportunity for you to give back to your community. There's always a chance. If you just look around, you don't even need all those resources. I, have, I know very many people who run volunteer movements where they, you just need to be able to form your own corporate with your friends and people in the community and do something for whatever that people are struggling with in the community that you live in. If you just look around, you'll find one. And I give you that challenge for 2021, for 2022. Take it on and do something for your community. Thank you. Actually, let, let, us not, let us not just delegate to the government and the corporates. Yes, actually, the, the power behind this organization, the Global Business Roundtable and the Global Fund for Jesus, is to be able to aggregate resources and give back to the society. But this time around, the difference is that we are giving back to the society on behalf of Jesus, doing what he would have loved to do if he was here physically. We take care of the orphan, we take care of the widow, we take care of the less privileged, we ensure that people's comfort are established on earth. And that is all we are standing for as an organization. Thank you for that wonderful contribution. Uh, Your Excellency, we've, uh, without, uh, can I give the last place to our Excellency from Ethiopia to quickly make our final word before we go to the next item of agenda? Our time is already up. Are you there, Excellency? Oh, she's not there. Oh, good. So quickly, Excellency, I want to thank you very much for a time like this. I want to appreciate all our panelists and for your wonderful contribution on this very important subject. You have actually helped us today to expand on the benefit of corporate social responsibility as it affects us as individual, corporate organization, and even as a nation and as, as a family. Thank you very much for your wonderful contribution today. We believe that we're still going to enjoy more of you uh, in the year coming as you become more resourceful to help this platform to add value and to add knowledge to, 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 to whatever we're doing. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Quickly, Your Excellency, as the program director, I will quickly go to the next item. Now we're going to Tanzania, where Your Excellency Renaida is waiting for us to help us with offering. Uh, Your Excellency Renaida, it's my privilege to have you this afternoon as you take the offering on our behalf today. Is SLS relied on there? Excellency Renada? Uh, okay, it's like she's off. Uh, can I ask one of our excellencies, if you don't mind, uh, to help us with the offering? Can I ask Excellency Genenza from uh, Aswatini? Excellency, if you're available, uh, you can mute and help us in the offering. If, if Renata is not on online. Are you there, Excellency? Are you able to help us to take the offering now? Technical group, please confirm that Excellency Renata is not on. Um, he's not on, Your Excellency. Okay, thank you, Your Excellency. Can I ask Excellency uh, Genetza to, to help us with the offering? Good afternoon, Excellencies. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you very much, uh, Forum Director. Thank you for the opportunity, though I'm not ready for, <laughs> for taking the offering. But in any case, um, uh, one will just have to maybe give, I don't know whether I have to start by giving a, 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 a brief background of what EFFJ stands for. But uh, I believe that from the, from the, uh, 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 the video that was played, 
when the program started, everyone should be abreast of, of, of the reasons for the organization and, the, and GFFJ. Uh, what I'll just, I mean, what, what I'll only say is uh, that on the screen, is 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 the account number for the Global Fund for Jesus, and to which excellencies are are, are required to 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 pay their contributions or their their their, their, their um, whatever they can put for purposes of. Hello, Dr. Sika, we hear you. Okay. I think we have an issue with technology. Okay. So, uh, Your Excellency, the, the account is displayed on the screen of the Global Fund for Jesus, the APSA account. You can free to make your offering or whatever contribution the Lord is leading you. We just had about social and corporate responsibility, why we should give back to our society and bless mankind. So feel free to make your contribution. Uh, as I ask His Excellency Walter Zembi to quickly pray for those that will be contributing their offering or their gift to the Global Fund for Jesus. Excellency Walter. Hello, excuse me, Your Excellency. I'm sorry, it's standard in here where I am. Okay. Okay. Are you back, sir? <laughs> Just quiet, Excellency Zambi. Um, Almighty Father, we beseech your face, we seek your face, we seek your blessings. Bless those that have uh, given, bless those that intend to give in the future, and bless those that have given in the past. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. The Lord bless you for that, for standing in for us. Quickly now we'll go to our Excellency Pelele Chunko, my sister that will be leading us in the vote of thanks and as well as the uh, announcement for the day. Your Excellency, you have the floor now. Um, thank you very much, Your Excellency Program Director, Pastor Oyebanji, uh, for the opportunity. I'd like to greet all the Excellencies in the most wonderful name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Um, it is my privilege to be giving announcements as well as the vote of thanks for today. And I'd like to start with the announcements and they read as follows. Kindly note that the GPR International Sessions for 2021, oh sorry, kindly note that the last GPR International Session for 2021 is today. Um, the date is the, the 11th of December, 2021, and we will resume on the 8th of January. So this is our last session uh, for this year, Your Excellencies. Please be advised that you can watch all the previous GBR International Online Sessions on the GBR website, which is www.globalbusinessroundtable.com and on YouTube. On behalf of the Global Business Roundtable uh, Board of Directors and the Global Fund for Jesus Board of Trustees, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for making the, trust, uh, the GBR Thanksgiving as well as the GFFJ NGO Awards um, a success. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Do you feel you are muted? Oh, sorry about that, Your Excellency. Yeah. Um, okay. And then um, the following announcement. Um, the Global Business Roundtable is proud to introduce the GBR mobile app for conferences, meetings, online sessions, events, registrations, live feedback with real-time polling and Q&As. The app was created for attendees to easily navigate, communicate, and engage on all our events everywhere and anytime. 
you are all encouraged to download the app for your conveniences. Please note that the GBR worship CDs and DVDs are now available on iTunes, YouTube Music, Amazon, and many more digital music stores. Catch a new thing on RTM, which is a free-to-air channel. Catch it also on TBN and TBN Zanzi. You are all invited to register in the Global Business Roundtable Network by accessing the GBR website, which is www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. Okay, um, and I'm now gonna move to the vote of thanks, uh, your excellencies. Um, first and foremost, uh, it is with a heart full of gratitude that we say a big thank you to our God who has been so faithful to GBR and GFFJ from the day of conception to the day when we started these online sessions, we say thank you, thank you, thank you to our God. We thank you, we thank him because uh, we've seen growth, we've witnessed holistic development in line with his purpose for our lives as individuals, um, and we continue to see the growth of these organizations. We give him all praise, we give him all glory, all honor for remaining so faithful to us. Um, and we say thus far, the Lord has helped GBR and GFFJ as well as SGH and all our associates. Therefore, we say Ebenezer. We also thank God, uh, your excellencies, this afternoon for his servant, uh, our convener, his excellency, Professor Sipom Selegu, for his obedience to the call of God regarding this great kingdom assignment. We thank our convener, um, for his dedication and for the sacrifice he makes towards the growth of these organizations. We continue to pray for him as well as our global executive um, uh, directors uh, uh, for GBR and GFFJ, Drs. Ricardo and Roberto Calderon in Guatemala. Thank you, Your Excellency Pastor Oyebanji for uh, driving this session so well and for always being available to serve with so much passion in this vision, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Uh, our continued appreciation remains with the GBR worship for always ushering us into the presence of God before and after these sessions. We thank you, Your Excellency Bishop Jean Chitea from Belgium for praying us into this session. Um, so powerfully and with so much anointing as usual. So thank you so very much. Uh, and our regards to First Lady Denise. Um, to our eminent panelists for this session, uh, Mr. Turan uh, Tuarun, or oh, oh, sorry to uh, pronounce your name, um, Clumsy, Your Excellency. Uh, I hope you can catch my heart uh, from. Um, Slovakia, um, Miss Jane uh, from Kenya, Dr. Eric from France, and Miss um, uh, Behanu from Ethiopia, even though you had network issues uh, at first, but thank you for proving to be a woman of determination and for pushing through. So thank you very much to all our eminent panelists uh, for for really taking time this afternoon uh, to remind and encourage us uh, on the additional steps which corporate companies as well as organizations uh, can take towards making a difference in, in our societies and in the employees' lives. Uh, steps beyond just making a profit. You know, um, the way you've unpacked um, the benefits of CSR this afternoon, uh, Your Excellencies, I couldn't help but think of a Zulu term called Ubuntu. Um, I feel like you've also uh, taken us few steps towards um, having more companies which embraces biblical values because the values in which you were reinstilling and encouraging us on uh, this afternoon are very much in line and aligned uh, with biblical values, with what the word teaches us. And as a God-based and uh, a king, uh, kingdom organization that is built up upon the, the biblical values, we truly appreciate um, your contributions and your presentations this afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm thinking our world can only become a better place you know, um, after 
really receiving those um, or rather uh, implementing those values in which you were encouraging us on this afternoon. So please receive our heartfelt. Thank you so very much. Um, we pray the Lord's blessing upon each and every one of you. We also uh, like to thank and appreciate His Excellency, Mr. Spamad Lakininza, for leading us in offering uh, towards the Global Fund for Jesus this afternoon. Um, our big and our heartfelt thank you to our technical team for their great work in making sure that our sessions run so smoothly uh, every Saturday. We truly thank you, Your Excellencies, uh, the technical team. Um, we'd also like to thank um, the session coordinators who put together these beautiful programs every week. Um, you have been consistent, uh, your excellencies, in bringing us only the best from across the globe. And we understand that uh, it is not an easy task, you know, to coordinate, to invite, um, put together a program, invite these eminent, powerful speakers, you know, only quality speakers and the, the program participants as well. So we thank you so very much, your excellencies. We'd also like to thank God for our intercessors, GBR intercessors, as well, our, as well as our GBR and G5J Board of Advisors for all the work of faith, which they do behind the scenes. We say to all of them, the results are so evident, uh, our intercessors and our Board of Advisors. We thank God for you. We'd also like to thank God um, for our new sectoral directors who have joined us between last year and this year. We appreciate them for saying yes to this divine call. Um, as well as, um, sorry, my battery is low. Um, I'm about to finish your excellency. We appreciate them for really saying yes to God and for hitting the ground running really. Um, you know, if I were to say a word of encouragement to them, I would say, um, even though GBR is not necessarily uh, like anything that you've been part of, but um, it is a very exciting journey and uh, you, will ex you will experience that. And um, I can assure you that you will enjoy it because it's a journey of uh, fulfillment as long as you allow God to really guide and teach you further. Um, uh, almost uh, towards the end, a big thank you to all our esteemed excellencies. I cannot uh, you know, afford not to thank them who really uh, took time to be part of this call. Thank you for taking your time uh, to really ask those thought provoking questions as well as uh, give those value adding uh, comments which contributed in making this uh, discussion an insightful one. We encourage each and every excellency present here today to kindly pay this information forward. Your Excellency John Srira from Malawi, as we are about to close this session in prayer, I'd like to thank you in advance, Your Excellency, and to all excellencies and you, uh, Your Excellency Pastor Oyebanji, uh, may we wish uh, all of you a blessed Christmas, as well as a blessed entry into 2021. We will see you all in January the 8th. I'd like to say Merry, Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the spirit of that Thanksgiving. <laughs> we want to also appreciate your Excellency Pilele. You have been a great value. You have been like a mother in Israel in GBR, GFFJ. We thank you for all the value you've added. I will thank you for thanking all of us for this meeting. First and foremost, I want to also return thanks to God and thank the convener, the Professor Sipo Meseleku, who has counted me worthy to traditionally, he has given me the privilege again to round up for this year, 2021. I'm not taking for granted. And the good news is that I'm doing this uh, particular facilitation here in South Africa, the base of the vision. So I'm in Nigeria as well as in South Africa today. Thank you very much for allowing me to be part of this program. I want to thank everyone in attendance. And I want to also thank His Excellency John Kawaya from Botswana. He will be leading us in the closing prayer for this occasion. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you for the spirit of GBR, GFFJ. Thank you for the value. Thank you for being part of this vision. Thank you for supporting the convener. Thank you for supporting every one of us and for adding our value. I believe we are rounding up the preparation year this month, but in January, we are taking off majestically in royalty, in power, in grace, in wisdom and favor. And the nations of the world will bow to us. We will influence it positively for the Lord. We we'll take over every mountain of society. We will do what Jesus will have loved to do. The resources 
from the four corners of the earth will come and will be a good custodian of the resources and the name of Jesus will be glorified. Your Excellency, until I see you again, I remain your program director, Pastor Luatumi Adeo Yubanji, all the way from Nigeria. God bless you all. I hand over quickly to His Excellency, John Kawe from Botswana for the closing prayer. Excellency Kawe? If, if Excellency John is not around, I, I think Excellency Priscilla Kawea is around. So the two are one. <laughs> so you can just go ahead and take us in the closing prayer. Uh, maybe the technical group should unmute them. Excellency Priscilla Kawea. Or did I miss that miss? Hello, Your Excellency. Yes. Please go ahead and take us in the closing prayer. Are they having technical issues? If they are having technical issues, then let's go back to Tanzania, where Your Excellency Renada is there. Waiting for Your Excellency Renada, are you on? Yes, I'm on, Your Excellency. Thank Please, you so much, and my apologies. Yeah, my apologies for being disconnected. We are having rain here. So thank you so much, uh, Pastor Oyebanji, for uh, running this program, which is the last one for this year, 2021. It's a honor to have this opportunity to have attended the last session and to listen to the presentation from other panelists. So I thank you so much for this opportunity. So let us pray as we are closing the session and as you are ending up this year, the year, the two past years have been a, a bit challenging, but God has been faithful to us. He has given us an opportunity to worship him, to honor him, to, and to have faith on his ways. So let us pray, uh, uh, Excellencies. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We say thank you so much for the grace and the honor that you have given us through 2021. We praise your name, Lord, and we give you glory. It's through your grace that we have been achieving all what we have achieved through, uh, throughout this time. We give you glory, Hannah, and returning all the uh, joy to you. Father, as we are closing the year, we pray for the grace of closing the year safely. We are praying for those who are suffering in any other ways that you may console them. We are praying for all our leaders, our uh, uh, convener, Professor Sipom Seleku, the Global Executive Directors for the GBR and GFFJ, Dr. Ricardo Calderon and Dr. Roberto Calderon. We are praying for all our executive team and we are praying for the staff of Sakum Noto Group Holdings, the GBR and the GFFJ. We are praying for all the volunteers and all that have been saving in this platform, Lord. We thank you for all the opportunities that you have given us. We thank you for everything that are countless blessings that we have received from you. And as we are closing father we say thank you and we are hoping to start the new year with such blessings that you give us you gave us this 2021 we thank you lord and say amen in jesus name we pray amen 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 i'm going to do something very untraditional for the first time i'm going to ask the technical group to open all your videos and all of us to wish ourselves happy christmas and wish ourselves the best of the year please open your video everybody uh, we're going to give you that privilege today. Open your video. Let's let, if you can open your video so that we can greet ourselves and wish ourselves the very best for the year 2021. Thank you for being part of GBR. All oh, your beautiful faces. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency <laughs> Member. Thank you, Excellency Zembi. Thank you, Excellency Edward. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Your Excellency but uh, Leslie John Zira. Thank you very Thank much. You. Excellency Happy, Happy New Year. Excellency <laughs> Allen, thank you very much. Your Excellency Renada, thank you very much. Any other face thank again? You. Want to see your face? Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you, your Excellency Eric. Thank you very much. Uh, we thank you for being part of Mommy Anna. Thank you very much, uh, Priscilla Kara. Thank you very much, John Comfort Maringi. Thank you very much, my brother. Don't get time. Thank you, Gombiro. Thank you very much. Matthew Gazeni, thank you very much. My Excellency Filili, thank you very much. Tebo Omusi, thank you very much. 
All of you, we wish you the very best until we see you again. Let's allow the worship team to lead us in worship as we go ahead to enjoy the Christmas. Please keep yourself safe. And on behalf of the convener, His Excellency Sifo Meseleku, I wish you the very best. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. We see a very successful 2022. Merry Christmas to you too. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless you. God bless you too, Excellency. Yeah, bye bye. God bless you. Bye, Excellency. Bye bye. Excellency. Powerful program direction. Eh? Thank, thank you very you. much. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you.
Jesus.